Hello, I am Emily Perlmutter Kamen. Hold on, I will share my screen. Got a little preview. I'm Emily Perlmutter Kamen, and my pronouns are she, her. I graduated from the MA program in the history of art at Williams College and the Clark Art Institute in June 2020. So shout out to my other grad art alum. It's been a great privilege and delight to teach these yoga classes inspired by works in the collection of the Williams College Museum of Art since graduating in June. And I really want to thank my colleagues at WICMA who have been supporting these programs, especially Alex, Nina, and Anne. And I'd like to offer an extra special thank you tonight to Layla and Kate for inviting me to participate in today's program. As a special note for today, I want everyone to feel really comfortable and confident during this yoga class. So if you'd prefer to have your camera off for the yoga class, that is perfectly all right. I encourage everyone to do what feels good for your own body and to modify anything that's not working for you. Um, this will be recorded, um, but only I will be recorded. So you will not be recorded uh, if that would make you feel uncomfortable. Just thought it'd be a good note. So um, for today's class, this is the work that we'll be looking at in the collection. So I'd like to, everyone to take one minute to just look closely. You can look at the shapes, the colors, the composition, any atmospheric qualities that you're seeing. And you can also think associatively. So if there are any smells or tastes or feelings or sensations that come to mind for you when you look at this, there are really no wrong answers. So associate away. Take a couple more seconds. So this is an untitled watercolor by the artist Tao Ho. It's really small, nine and a quarter inches by seven and a half inches. So this is one example where when you're doing something virtual, it can make something that you may have just passed over because of its small size in the museum really big. You can think about it for the rest of the class in whatever scale you want to. So if you want to think of it as a big mural in the wall, in the room you're in, or if you want to think of it as something that can fit in the palm of your hand or something like this about postcard size. The artist Tao Ho was born in Shanghai and graduated from Williams College in 1960, where he studied art history, music, and theology. He went on to study architecture at Harvard and had a prolific career as the assistant to Walter Gropius and teaching and practicing architecture in Hong Kong. Tao Ho once described his life work as, quote, an ongoing revelation of the potential of an artistic spirit responding to a social and environmental consciousness. It is this consciousness coupled with a devoted interest in Eastern philosophy and a love for the beauty in nature that drives me to establish a humanistic approach to architecture and promote the preservation of our natural environment and the enrichment of cultural heritage. So before knowing any of that, I selected the work for today's class because of its beautiful colors and composition, and frankly, because I missed the Purple Mountains. I was drawn to this piece because it was made while the artist was at Williams, which is pretty rare in the collection of the Williams College Museum of Art, where I've been working for the past two and a half years and have really gotten to know a small fraction, but significant of the over 15,000 objects in the collection. I found that Tauho's connection to Williams and the Williams College Museum of Art is quite strong. His two daughters went to Williams and were lucky enough to hear tonight from Suen, who is with us, um, and Wickma continues to collect his work. 
So this work chosen for tonight uh, entered the collection in kind of a funny way. So as part of his 50th reunion art show that was held in June 2009, another alum brought this painting to the show and he explained that he had paid $2 for it when Tao Ho needed some money when he was a student and they were friends and fraternity brothers. He said that the painting was not for sale, um, but the then director of the Williams College Muse Art, Museum of Art really loved it and it was included as a gift. Wickma has a number of works by Tao Ho in the collection and I've included another one here that was made while he was a student from 1959, a woodcut, and then um, this really beautiful drawing ink on rice paper that was acquired by the museum just last year. As well as being an artist in the collection, he's also donated works by other artists to the museum, including a major gift of Chinese paintings, which I've included just one small example of here. We're lucky enough tonight to hear some really beautiful words written by Suen, who's generously offered to share them with us tonight. So if you wanna um, read and explain some small fraction of what I've missed in this introduction to your father, we would love that so much. Thank you for inviting me. Um, to give you a little bit of context, my father and my mother, when she was actually um, brought to Williams, by my mom and my father as a special student. Um, they were at Williams as students and they were madly in love with each other. And they were married on um, their, his graduation day. And um, it's, it's really serendipitous to be able brought into this session today. Um, I looked at this painting, this is actually, uh, um, a painting that um, I've never seen before and um, and look at it and then uh, the words just came through. So here's a haiku for all of you and uh, it's really my pleasure to be able to perhaps uh, give you a little bit of context of where he was at that time when he was a student. Old dreams soaked sable serenade in purple mountains, lightness of being. Thank you. So thank you so much, Suen, for those beautiful words. Those words and the painting will guide our practice this evening. We'll be thinking about these mountains, these soaked mountains and climbing high and climbing far. We'll also think about um, the mountains stability as well as this lightness of being, the atmosphere enveloping them. I'm sure we've all had the experience of that beautiful Williamstown view of low clouds over the mountains that just look like they're giving them a hug when you wanna just run right up to them um, and kind of experience the, the heaviness and the weight of those clouds with the stability of the mountains. There will be an optional Spotify playlist included with tonight's practice, and um, the link will be in the chat. If you would prefer to use your own music, feel free, or no music at all, also feel free. Um, we will get started in just a moment. Don't start up the music just yet. I'll tell you when, but if you want to take a moment to sort of figure out how to get it, you can do that now. Meanwhile, you can sit comfortably on your mat. I like to sit on a block or even just a couch pillow, especially at the beginning of a practice to elevate my hips. So you can do that. You can just sit up nice and tall. You can close your eyes. We were just looking at this beautiful watercolor. So now try recalling it to your mind. What did it look like for you? Were you drawn to the shapes, the colors, 
or were you drawn to something that reminded you of your own experience, whether that was in Williamstown or in the place you are now or another place you know and love? So you can think about that. Meanwhile, you can think about your own body, just also strong, stable, light. And you can do a body scan from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, just thinking about if there's anywhere where you're feeling tightness, tension, stuck, or anywhere that's feeling particularly mobile, agile, light. You can close your lips, inhale. Open the mouth, exhale. Close the lips, inhale. Open the mouth, exhale. Last time, close the lips, inhale. Open the mouth, big, loud exhale. You can open your eyes and come onto your back. I'm just gonna move this down slightly so you can see me. If you have a block, you can bring it with you or your pillow. If you don't, don't worry about it. And you can plant your feet on the mat. You want your feet about hips width apart. And you want maybe so your fingers could graze your heels. You can put the block the medium way in between your thighs if you have it. Again, if not, don't worry about it. Press into the feet and lift up the hips towards the ceiling. So already gaining that firm base of support from our biggest muscle group in the body, the glutes. So pressing into the feet, lifting up the hips, as well as feeling comfortable with having your camera on or your camera off. I also hope that everyone feels comfortable in this yoga class. It should feel good. So if something doesn't feel good for you, feel free to skip it, to modify it, take what I'm saying as a suggestion. I even brought my special purple block for today. You can lift up your arms like you're holding up a big tray of your favorite food. You can pull back on all five fingers, not forgetting about the thumb, starting with your right hand, stretching out the wrists. We spend so much of our day with our wrists going just in one direction, typing, texting, writing. Feels so good to stretch them out. And you can switch. You can bring your arms down by your side. Just lower the pelvis an inch or two. Lift back up. Lower and lift. The glutes should really be awake now. Lower and lift. Then you can lower down segmentally, so your upper back, middle back, and lower back all the way down to the mat. If you have the block, you can just put it off to the side. We'll start by waking up our abs too, so you'll know where they are, how to use them. And you can use your abs throughout every pose and throughout the rest of our class. You can interlace the hands behind the head, take a big inhale. Exhale, lift up off the shoulder blades. Look down at your low belly and draw it down towards the mat. You can knit the ribs in. Inhale and come down. Exhale, lift up. You can relax your head into your hands. So you're really using your abs and not your neck. Inhale, come down. One more time like this, exhale, lift up. Inhale and come down. If this is a lot for you, and it's already a lot for me, you can keep doing what you're doing. If you want to add on, you can join me. Exhale, lift up. Keep your knees where they are. Keep your head where they are. Pick up your feet and extend the legs. So now your legs are making about a 45 degree angle to the floor. Slurp that low belly down. Lift the tailbone up just one centimeter. 
You can bring the feet back down and the head back down. Exhale, lift up. Option to lift up the feet, extend the legs, draw the low belly down. Bring the feet down and the head down. Adding on a little bit more from here if you'd like to. Exhale, lift up. Lift up the feet, extend the legs. Extend the arms this time so they're hovering a couple inches off the mat. Bring the hands back behind the head. Feet come down and head comes down. Adding on from here, exhale, lift up. Lift up the feet, extend the legs. Extend the arms and you can add some pulses here. For five, four, three, two, and one. Hands come back behind the head. Feet come down and head comes down. Nice work. You can spread your feet out wide on the mat. Goal post your arms and lower your knees over towards the left. So your feet are wide on the mat, pressing into the right foot. You can look over your right shoulder. It feels really good on the right hip flexor. And you can switch. So lowering the knees over towards the right, maybe looking over the left shoulder, pressing into the left foot. can hug the knees in, roll around on the sacrum a little bit, massaging the low back. You can rock onto all fours. So you want your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. As you inhale, you can draw the chest through the arms for cow. And as you exhale, you can press the floor away from you, round the back for cat. Going at your own pace. Just following the tempo of your own breath. Keeping the neck nice and relaxed. You can come to a neutral spine. You can lower the forearms down onto the mat. If you have tighter shoulders, you can interlace the hands like this. Otherwise, you can keep them parallel, tuck the toes, and lift up the hips for dolphin. You can always bend the knees. You want to think about lifting up from underneath the armpits. You can start lifting and lowering the heels if you'd like to add on a little bit more. Take one more big breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Bring the knees down, touch the big toes together, and press back into a wide knee child's pose. So child's pose is a fantastic place to return to if you're feeling tired or you just want a break. We're going to move into our flow now. So if you'd like to start up the Spotify playlist, the time would be now. The link is in the chat. And you can copy paste that into your browser if you um, have a Spotify account. If you don't, or if this is like too confusing, feel free to listen to your own music. Whatever you like to move to should be just fine too. All right, I will get started in three, two, and one. You can make your way to the top of your mat, coming to Tadasana. So Tadasana mountain pose is such a foundational pose of yoga. And every time we return to it, which is so many times throughout the class, you can think about the mountains in this watercolor, where they appear on the page, what they're made of. You can also think about your favorite mountains 
where you are, your favorite mountains in Williamstown, letting all these swirl together. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, fold forward. Keeping the knees bent, hinge at the hips. Plant both hands on the mat. Step the right leg back. Drop the knee and the top of the foot. Inhale, arms rise. Plant the hands. Step back to plank. Shoulders over wrists. Come to the knees. And lower all the way down to the belly. Elbows pointing towards the back wall. You're lowering in one long and strong piece. Chest draws through low cobra. And press back downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward in between the hands. If it doesn't get there on its own, just pick it up and move it. Lower the left knee and the top of the foot. Inhale, arms lift. Nice. Plant the hands, lean into them. Left foot meets the right forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands, step the left leg back. Drop the knee and the top of the foot. Inhale, arms rise. Plant the hands, step back to plank. Come to the knees and lower. Chest draws through low cobra. And press back downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward. Drop the right knee in the top of the foot. Inhale, arms lift. Plant the hands, forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. We'll do that all again. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands, step the right leg back. Drop the knee in the top of the foot. Inhale, arms rise. Plant the hands, step back to plank. Come to the knees and lower. Chest draws through low cobra. And press back downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward. Drop the left knee in the top of the foot. Inhale, arms lift. Plant the hands forward fold. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, forward fold. Step the left leg back. Drop the knee in the top of the foot. Inhale, arms lift. Plant the hands, step back to plank. Come to the knees and lower. Chest draws through low cobra. And press back downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward. Drop the right knee in the top of the foot. Inhale, arms lift. Plant the hands forward fold. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, forward fold. Step the right leg back. You want your feet about hips width apart on the mat. Rise up high crescent lunge. So engaging the right glute, engaging your core. Move on to our first sequence. You can bring the chest about halfway down to the thigh. Arms come by the sides of the body. So you're in this tilted high crescent lunge. Lift back up high crescent lunge. A few more times like this, just tilting forward, keeping your whole core, including your glutes, super stable and lift. Tilt and lift. Last time, tilt. This time, you can shift onto the left leg for an airplane or warrior three. If you want some more stability, you can bring your hands onto the left thigh to just give you some more support as you float up that right foot. Step the right leg back, hands plant. Step the left leg back, coming into plank. So we're going to do throughout the class a couple different types of 
mountain climbers. And the first one is like this. You can stay in your plank, your shoulders over your wrist. You can tap your right knee down, back to plank. Tap the left knee down, back to plank. Going at your own pace. Bring the left knee down, bring the right knee down, and you can lower all the way down to the belly. Arms come by the sides of the body. Lift up the chest, the legs, and the arms for locust. Lower down, and press back downward facing dog. Big inhale, open the mouth, exhale. You can pedal out the feet. Walk your feet up to meet your hands. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold, fold forward. We'll do that on the other side. Step the left leg back. Rise up, high crescent lunge. So I like to think about this as sort of organizing myself, make sure my left glute is working for me, my core is engaged. If you're not sure if your glute is working for you, you can always just put your hands, see if it's firing. You can draw the chest forward about halfway to the thigh and lift. Lower and lift. Next time as you come into that tilted high crescent lunge, can shift forward into airplane. Can use your hands as scaffolding here on the upper inner right thigh and shift forward. Aiming for a level pelvis. Step the left leg back, hands plant on either side of the right leg and step the right leg back for a plank. Do that first type of mountain climbers, tapping one knee down at a time. Keeping the arms straight and strong. Can bring your right knee down and your left lower all the way down to the belly one long and strong piece arms come by the sides of the body float up the chest the legs and the arms lower down press back downward facing dog inhale and exhale you can pedal out the feet. You can walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, arms rise. We'll move into a few rounds of Sun Sal A. You could go at your own pace. You could follow me. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands. Make your way back to plank. Walking back or floating back. Lower down halfway or all the way, chaturanga. Chest draws through cobra or upward facing dog and press back downward facing dog. The next round I'll show it in a modified way. You can bend the knees, walk or hop forward. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, forward fold. Make your way back to plank. So you can do what I did before. Or you can bring the knees down, lower all the way down to the belly. Draw the chest through for a low cobra and press back downward facing dog. Bend the knees, walk or hop forward. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, forward fold. Last time, make your way back to plank and lower. Cobra up dog and downward facing dog. Big inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale. 
Walk your feet up to meet your hands. Inhale, arms lift. Bend at the knees, Utkatasana chair pose. Finding that firm base of support, hands come to prayer at heart center. So from your chair, twist two inches towards the left. Really letting that twist come from the obliques. You can rest your right elbow about halfway on the left thigh, and then you can rise to stand. And you're strong and stable to Dasana Mountain Pose. Twist towards the right. Left elbow comes onto the center of the right thigh. Back to center, twist to the left. I like to think here about sort of weaving between those mountain forms, floating on that heavy atmosphere. You make your way back and forth. If you're feeling extra lightness, you can lift up your heels. We'll end up facing the left. So your right elbow's on the left thigh. From here, bring your right fingertips down in front of the right foot. And just bring your left hand on top of your left hip and float up the right leg. So you're in a revolved half moon. Bring the left hand down in front of the left foot and open up the hips, open up the chest, coming into a regular half moon. So that quick move between strong stability and airiness and floating, you can step the right foot down, coming into a squat, adding some pulses here up and down you can bring the hands down and from here you can turn your heels out and back in out and back in keeping your spine long the whole time Have your heels turned in. You can pivot your chest to face the front, plant the right hand in line with the left foot, open up the left arm, twisted crescent lunge. Make sure this right glute is active. You can bring the right knee down. You're in this 90-90 position. And then let the left leg swing open like a gate, coming into a modified side plank. Bring the left hand down, the left knee down, cat cow. Come to a neutral spine, curl the toes under, lift up the hips down dog. Lift the left leg up, step the left foot forward in between the hands, followed by the right foot, inhale, arms lift. Moving between um, twisted chairs here, we're gonna do the other side. So you can twist towards the right. You want both knees tracking forward. So the movement's really coming from the rib cage, coming from the obliques, rather than jutting out a knee and yanking yourself around. Again, if you're feeling that extra lightness, you can lift up the heels. End up twisting towards the right. So your left elbow is on the right thigh. 
and bring your right hand on your hip, your left hand in front of the left foot, and float up the left leg. It's okay to have this right knee bent a little or a lot. Revolves half moon. When you can bring the right hand down in front of the right foot and open up the hips, open up the chest towards the left. Step the left leg down, coming to this nice, strong base of support squat. You can add some pulses here. This time as you lower, you can bring the hands down, pivoting on those heels. You can bring the heels out and in. Bending the knees and bringing them towards straight. They don't have to be totally straight, but you want your spine long. You can walk your hands towards the front of the mat, left hand plants in line with the right foot, the right knee is bent, the left leg is straight, and open up the right arm towards the right, twisted crescent lunge. And bring the left knee down, you can kick stand it out, and let the right leg swing open for a modified side plank. Bring the right hand down, right knee down, cat cow. Come to a neutral spine, tuck the toes under, lift the hips down dog. Right leg lifts, step the right foot forward, followed by the left, inhale, arms lift. Knees bend, Utkatasana, chair pose. Move into one round of Sun Sal B. Again, you can go your own pace, you can follow me. Exhale, forward fold. Make your way back to plank and lower. Cobra up dog and downward facing dog. Left leg lifts. Step the left foot forward in between the hands and rise up warrior one. So the right leg, sorry, the left leg's in front, the right leg is in back, the right toes are facing about one o'clock. Both hip points are facing forward. Plant the hands, step back to plank and lower. Cobra up dog and downward facing dog. Right leg lifts. Step the right foot forward in between the hands. Bring the left foot down, warrior one. This time left toes are facing about 11 o'clock. Plant the hands, step back to plank and lower. Cobra up dog and downward facing dog. Big inhale and exhale. Left leg lifts. Step the left foot forward in between the hands and rise up warrior two. So this time your left toes are facing forward, the right toes are facing the right, and you're taking up a lot of space on your mat, spreading out wide. You can reverse your warrior. And then bring the left forearm to left thigh. Reach the right arm over all the way across your right Blue sky towards the left, growing long in the right side body. And switch. One more time, warrior variation. And then you can bring your right arm down and around, 
Pivot to face the front, high crescent lunge. Shift onto the left leg and cross the right ankle over the left knee for a figure four stretch. Bend the left knee as deeply as feels good. Flex the right foot. Step the right foot down. Bend the knees, hinge at the hips, plant the hands. From here, we'll move into another variation of the mountain climber theme. So you can step the right leg back, lower the knee, keep the right toes curled under, lift the arms in a low lunge. Plant the hands, lean into them, right foot meets the left, step the left leg back, drop the left knee, keep the left toes curled under, and lift. So we're coming to these alternating low lunges. You could do it at your own pace. End up with the right knee down, arms lifted, but this time, instead of shifting into the forward folds, you can bring the hands down in front of the left leg and shift into a standing L. So you're leaning into the hands, chest is drawing through the arms, the right toes are facing the back. You can bring the right leg behind the left, Bring down your right butt cheek and then your left for a seated spinal twist. Sitting up nice and tall. Hands plant. Step back downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. Right leg lifts. Step the right foot forward in between the hands. Rise up, warrior two. Again, spreading out that mat. Feel like you're reaching from one tip of the paper, your watercolor to the other. Can reverse it. Right forearm to right thigh, left arm reaches over, warrior variation. Reverse warrior. Warrior variation. And you can sweep the left arm down and around, pivot on the ball of the left foot into a high crescent lunge. Shift onto the right leg, cross the left ankle over the right knee, bend the right knee, flex the left foot, figure four stretch. Step the left foot down. Hinge at the hips, forward fold. Move into that modification or variation of the mountain climber. Our alternating low lunges, so left leg is back. Left toes are pulled under, arms are lifted up towards the sky. Plant the hands, step the left foot forward, right leg back, right knee comes down, arms lift. Going at your own pace. If you're feeling you've already got so much air here, Sort of switch in midair. Again, it's yoga, so there's really no prize for doing it or not doing it. Whatever's going to feel best for your body is uh, the ultimate prize. Can end with your left leg back, your left toes curled under. This time, instead of 
Coming into the forward fold, shift onto the hands. Standing L. So it's making an L shape because your left leg does not have to go very high. You want your left toes facing the mat, really leaning into the hands. And then you can bring the left leg behind the right, sit down in your seated spinal twist. Sitting up nice and tall. Plant the hands towards the front, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. Walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, arms lift, hands come to prayer. So we're going to put that all together now, taking some stuff out, adding some stuff in. So now is a great time to take a sip of water if you need one. And then when you're ready, you can make your way back to the top of your mat. So coming back to Tadasana, Mountain Pose, close your eyes. Picture the watercolor. What stood out to you? And you can let what stood out to you change. So maybe you were looking at the colors Maybe you were looking at the paper beneath it, or you were looking at the brush strokes, and now you're thinking about a smell or a taste or a sensation, a feeling. Is it warm or cold to you? Is it light or dark? Again, there's no wrong answers. You can exhale, open your eyes, inhale, arms lift. Exhale, forward fold. Step the right leg back, and lift up high crescent lunge. So this time, two options here. You can either what we do what we were doing before, a tilted high crescent lunge, back to high crescent, or you can shift between airplane, really hovering above that mountain and carefully stepping back for your high crescent. You can just float above here, really requires a lot of core strength for what you may not think is the harder part, which is stepping back. We'll all meet up back in high crescent lunge. Bring the hands down, step the left leg back for plank. So again, two options. You can do what we were doing before, tapping one knee down at a time, or you can make it a bit more of a run or hop, making your way up, maybe elevating your heart rate a little. And you can bring both knees down, lower all the way down to the belly. Arms come by the sides of the body. Lift up the chest, legs, and arms for locust. Lower down. Press back, downward facing dog. Inhale. Open the mouth, exhale. Walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, arms lift. Bend the knees, Utkatasana chair pose. So moving into those twists, Weaving your way, maybe floating up. Feeling that stability of the mountain, the lightness of the clouds in the air. Maybe that contrast of that deep purple and that, that beautiful sable color. Twist to the left, left fingertips come down, open right up into half moon. So you're on the left leg, the right leg is lifted. Bend the left knee, just lightly. Step the right foot down, 
And this time, instead of doing squats, we'll move right into side lunges. So crossing the body, bending one knee, opposite leg is straight. Or if it's more stable and strong to you, you can have both hands down. Bend the left knee, pivot to face the front, right hand plants, left arm lifts, twisted crescent lunge. Two options here, either a modified side plank like we were doing before, or you can do a full side plank coming onto the outside of your right foot, stacking the left foot on top. So that's the full, this is the modify. You can also lift the left leg up. Look down at the right hand, Step the left foot forward, open up warrior two. Next, reverse your warrior. Left forearm to left thigh, warrior variation. Reverse your warrior. Warrior variation. Swing that right arm down and around, high crescent lunge. Plant the hands, step the right foot to meet the left. And we'll do our other kind of form of climbing or making your way around the mountain. Alternating low lunges. With that option to plant the hands, and switch in midair. Maybe you just try it once and see what it's like to find that lightness of being. Meet up in our low lunge with the right leg back, left leg in front. Shift onto the hands, lean into them. So you're in your standing L. I'll hop back. So stay here. But again, if you want to catch some air, float a little on a cloud, you can just try shifting into the hands. Maybe that left leg floats up. Maybe it doesn't at all. You can bring the right leg behind the left, seated spinal twist. Roll out the shoulders. And forward. Plant the hands. Unwind into your downward facing dog. Big inhale. Open the mouth, exhale. Walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, arms lift. Hands come to prayer at heart center. Close your eyes for a moment. We have one more side to do. Another opportunity to picture this beautiful watercolor before you. You can picture yourself in the landscape, near the landscape, looking at this painting so big or tiny and in your hands. Open the eyes, inhale, arms lift. Exhale, forward fold. Step the left leg back. Rise up, high crescent lunge. Chest draws down about halfway to the thigh. Tilted crescent lunge. Back up to high crescent lunge. So that's option one. Option two is finding more of that atmosphere to float on. Shifting into your warrior through your airplane and then carefully stepping back to high crescent. It's okay to wobble, it's okay to fall out. It's okay if one side is a lot harder or easier than the other. I'll end up here in our high crescent. 
plant the hands, step back to plank, and tap one knee down at a time, and lift, or make it more of a run or hop. Bring the knees down, and lower all the way down to the belly. Arms come by the sides of the body. Lift up the chest, legs, and arms for locust. And lower. Press back, downward facing dog. Inhale. And exhale. Walk your feet forward to meet your hands. Inhale, arms lift. Finding that Tadasana, that stable mountain. Hands come to prayer. Twist towards the right. Lift up, maybe floating the heels up, twist towards the left. And end up twisting towards the left. Bring the right fingertips down in front of the right foot. Float the left leg up. Half moon. Bend the right knee, grounding down to lift up. Step the left foot down, moving into side lunges. You can cross the body. You can have both hands down. Some people like to have both arms kind of here, like wings, surveying your landscape, or on your hips. Bend the right knee, left hand plants, turn the toes so they're facing the front, twisted crescent lunge. Two options here, modified side plank or full side plank. For full side plank, you can come into the outside of the left foot, stack the right foot on top. Look down at your left hand. Step the right foot forward. Open up warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Right forearm to right thigh, warrior variation. Reach, reach, reaching. Reverse your warrior. Warrior variation. Left arm comes down and around, high crescent lunge. Plant the hands in front of you. Left foot meets the right. Step the right leg back, bring the knee down, but not the toe, arms lift. Hands plant, step the right foot to meet the left, left leg steps back, left, leg lo left knee lowers, and lift. Or maybe you plant the hands and add that little bit of a float. Even if you're just skimming the mat. End up with our left knee down, arms lifted, hands planted in front of the right leg, lean into the hands, standing L. So remembering your options here, you can stay here, or if you wanna take a little bit of flight, get a little bit of air, find some more lightness, maybe start by just lifting and lowering the right heel. Seeing what it feels like to lean into the hands. Or maybe, you find just a tiny bit of a hop. It does not have to be big. You don't even have to detach your thigh from your belly. And you can bring the left leg behind the right. 
Roll the shoulders back and forward. And you can just stay here on your butt. Bring your legs out in front of you. If you're listening along to the playlist, you can come to the last song. Lay on your back. Nice work, everyone. You can cross your left ankle over your right knee, coming into a figure four stretch. So very similar to the figure four we were doing standing. You want to sink your right hip, flex your feet. If you want a deeper stretch, you can catch the outside of the right shin. And switch. So you're crossing your right ankle over your left thigh, just above the knee. Now is also a really great opportunity to note the difference is in the two sides of your body. So if one hip feels tighter than the other, just noticing it without judgment. And then you can extend your legs, extend your arms down by the sides of your body, close your eyes, and just breathe here for the next few moments absorbing all of the wonderful energy we created, letting the floor hold you up, just relaxing in Shavasana. Keeping your eyes closed, you can slowly start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Roll your wrists and your ankles. And reach your arms out overhead in a final big full body stretch, fingers to toes. Hug your knees in. Give yourself a great big loving squeeze. You can make your way to a comfortable seat facing forward. Close the lips, inhale. Open the mouth, exhale. You can open your eyes, look on the screen. You can take in the beautiful words that Suen shared with us. You can take in this gorgeous and delicate watercolor. And as you're doing that, notice any differences in what you're seeing. If there's something new that's popping up to you, something you misremembered or thought about differently, or a shape that's maybe changed for you based on moving your body in new ways for the past hour or so. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I really appreciate trying something new, seeing things different. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. With so much gratitude, thank you. I'll be sticking around for the next few minutes. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and I, there will also be 
a link. I think there's already a link in the chat for my next class if you'd like to join me with the Williams College Museum of Art on February 23rd. And thank you, Kathy and Eleanor and Abby and Bethany and Bianca for joining me. And thank you, Alexandra and Gavin and Denise and Mike. 